The following is a sponsored program on WBT. Investment advice provided on the following program is on an individual basis. Listeners should not consider today's discussion as a recommendation for any investment and should carefully evaluate before investing. This is your Real Estate Today on News Talk 1110 WBT. Hello, friends, and welcome to the show, Your Real Estate Today. It's Paul Jamison, your host with the Jamison family of companies. That's Jamison Realty, Jamison Property Management, Jamison Property Investments. So glad that you're spending your Saturday afternoon Memorial Weekend with us, and we're just so glad that you're with us today and hope wherever you are that you are safe. So as you know, you can listen to us on 1110 AM 99.3 FM radio.com. And also you can see uh, our faces and of course my guest on our YouTube channel. So uh, we make sure to give you more ways to get more information. So we're glad you're with us. And I'm here with my good friend, Preston Sandlin with Home Inspection Carolina. Uh, It's great to have you back, Preston. Yeah, Paul, great to, great to, great to, See you virtually, but uh, yeah. it's good to see you. You look great. <laughs> yeah, man, you look Hawaiian today. So when people uh, tune in with you, they're going to see you Hawaiian. Yeah, I try to change up the backgrounds. And, you know, I'm usually the crazy pants guy, but I'm going to be in the crazy shirt on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, uh, there's a lot of fun things you can do with it. I was on a Zoom call with my uh, oldest son, Bill, uh-huh. and uh, he made himself into a potato. Oh, he had the Snapchat thing. The yes. Snapchat. So he gets online. He's eyeballs, mouth, and a, a potato. Not a Mr. Yeah. Potato, a real potato. And then he switches over. He's got a mask, a snorkel, and there's fish swimming in front of him. All kinds of crazy stuff. So I'm not quite that creative. So I, I got a little bit more time on, uh, less time on my hands than I think he does. So. It's the Snapchat thing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't even know what Snapchat is, so that's that's how far I go. Uh, well, you, well, it's great to have you. You know, Preston, we're going to spend today talking not just about top 10 ways to get a cleaner home inspection report. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about our market. And then I thought it would be interesting, since I have you, to talk about how to avoid some bad, bad contractors. Okay, that sounds good. That's right up my alley. Yeah. I go after I come in after a lot of bad contractors. Ah, uh, yeah. See? See? Uh-huh. I do I I do know that when I got the expert, I got the expert. All <laughs> right. So let's talk a little bit about let's start the show out as I always do with a little bit of a monologue. Um, you know, as I'm learning about YouTube and the YouTube channel, I I had one and didn't even know I had one. So I do have one. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how you find it, but you have, I have one. I have You're to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. And I've been on Preston's YouTube channel. We've done a, yeah. a couple podcasts together. And of course, this will be on my YouTube channel, probably Preston's. So how do they find yours? Uh, just uh, Home Inspection Carolina uh, on YouTube. Okay. Yeah, I'm right we'll there. see. It's probably Jameson Realty on YouTube or Paul Jameson on YouTube. It's probably one or the other. So you can try it. You'll probably yeah. find it. The, the the thumbnail is uh, me and my wife and kids because uh, you know they, they look a lot cuter than me. So yes, put them in front. <laughs> so that might give me more. <laughs> well, you know I've done some podcasts with Preston, and I did one also this week with a with a Berkshire Hathaway. And uh, he asked me three things uh, that helps you to be successful in these times. And. Then he also asked me a very unpopular question, so I'm going to answer both. And so, you know, Preston, you asked me the same question in our podcast. So when I give my answer, I'd be interested to hear yours. All right. So here's three things that I shared on the podcast with Mario Mitchell. Okay. Number one, in order to be successful during these, you got to show up. You have got to show up. And that now is taking many forms, right? Right. So first of all, I get up at 5 a.m. I started that a while ago. And, you know, I spend some time certainly in the morning getting ready. But if you put yourself in a position where you need to be on a committee or a board of directors or a part of a movement or a part of a 
a group that is working to better themselves during these times, you need to show up. And I think yep. our clients expect us to show up, irregardless of what's going on out there. And I want to show up for my clients. So when I talk to them, it isn't just, hey, are you thinking about selling your house or refinancing because rates are great? What do you need? Is there something I can get for you? Is there a way that I can help you? That's what I'm made of. And that's what I want to do. Right. Right. Second thing is I want to put up and not have to shut up. Because I want to put my money where my mouth is. And I want to put my integrity in everything that I do. And, you know, I'm human. I'm not perfect. But one thing I am, and that's all in. Yeah. So that's what you'll find with me. Both feet are in. Not just one. No toe in the water for me. That's a big toe. All right. <laughs> Next, I want to keep it up. So what I start, I don't want to stop. And I find when I take my foot off the gas, it feels really weird. You know, I need brakes like anybody else. But when you love what you do and it's a part of you, it changes your perspective. I love what I do. I love who I do it with. And, you know... The last three days of my life were an example of some of the greatest experiences that I can have. I have two very good friends, different families, and just briefly speaking specifically about once one. Um, uh, Michael and Teresa are very good friends of mine. We've been working together for a long time to get their house ready. We've developed a friendship. Um, I like them. Fortunately for me, every listing appointment, I make new friends, and I think that's fun. Um, but we worked really hard. We put their house on the market, even in these times. We had 11 offers. Wow. Went under contract in 72 hours. We were in multiple offer. We were also in multiple offer in the backup offers. Wow. So we have a contract and a backup. That is amazing the offer is amazing and it was really rewarding after all this time of working together planning and strategizing around their plan to be in that place and last night at 10 a.m signed another contract for a client that wow. is moving out of town to be with their grandchildren and it was so rewarding um, to know now they they now have a path because their house is under contract Man, when your feet hit the floor in the morning, you can't ask for a better feeling. So, you know, does it always do that way? No, because my last and final thing, even though I said three, there is a fourth. <laughs> and that is screw ups. So I got show up, put up, keep, keep it up and screw ups. Screw ups are what make you better. Screw right. ups are what keep you growing. Screw ups <laughs> are what they are. And it makes me human. But did you notice I didn't mention I, I'm not into downs. Sit down, lay down, taken down, beat down, slow down. That's not my thing. And it <laughs> sounds like I should probably be on stage with a microphone being an inspirational speaker. I'm not. I got one leg shorter than the other and half my own teeth. I would not look good. I'd look like that Pinocchio dude up on stage. What I'm telling you is this. You, you, you know, any realtor, any home inspector like Preston, you know, people that love what they do, they, it smells different, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a cool thing. You know, Preston, um, when we come out of the break, I got a couple more things to share, but I really like your perspective. Would you give it? Yeah. When we get back, we've got know, about 30 seconds before the end of the first break, but I'd like to hear your thoughts about what you think makes you so successful during these times. And then I'm going to be Mr. Unpopular because I already know you're going to go down the same path with me. <laughs> Does that sound good after the break? Preston Sandler with Home Inspection Carolina, Paul Jameson, your host. We're going to talk some real estate 
and we're going to have some fun. And so keep with us at News Talk 1110, 99.3 WBT, radio.com, or some YouTube channel I don't really know the name of that I'm on, and I'll figure it out. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Show Your Real Estate Today. Good music, TJ. Uh, what's so funny is if you watch this uh, podcast online, you'll see where Preston was nodding his head to the music and then he buffered. So it was it was actually kind of fun to watch on this end. And what was the name of my YouTube channel? Uh, Jameson Realty. Jameson Realty is my YouTube channel. So now I know. <laughs> I can I can add that to my mantra, my resume. Woo! There you go. All right. YouTube done different. Right. <laughs> so, Preston, um, before we go to the the Mr. Unpopular stuff, you know, what do you think during these times makes um, and brings about success? You know, it, it's very similar to yours. Um, you know, you know, in life, you can divide the thing into two categories, things you can control and things you can't control. Yeah. And, and there's just no use worrying about things you can't control and just focus on the things you can control. Right. And obviously all these shutdowns, all this stuff we're seeing, it's troubling. And you see, uh, uh, you know, watch the news. Don't watch it very long because it's paralyzing. It is. You know, we can't control that. But, you know, there are things we can do. So don't let the things that you can't control paralyze you for the things you can do. And like, like you said, you know, I've had a couple of days where I'm like, just I'm, 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 our governor, that's not fair, blah, blah, blah. But then I got over it. And I said, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. Yeah. What are the things I can do as soon as my feet hit the floor? And, you know, and, and we've all gone more virtual. You know, we've gotten better at this. And, uh, you know, moving forward, man, I, I'm a lot better at technology than I was. But every day, you know, what can we do? And I want to back up what you were saying. Anybody out there thinks this has hurt? Or the real estate market, the real estate market is crazy right now. I mean, like, like houses sell like that. We're doing the inspections. I mean, multiple offers. I'm seeing exactly what you said. So, I mean, we're actually busier than, I, I mean, obviously there was a lull right there in the beginning because of the showings and stuff. But right now, it's it's crazy busy. The real There's never been a better time to buy or sell a house because that's, of the rates and that sort exactly of thing. exactly right. That's exactly right. You know, a lot of people are trying to put us into next year. Uh, mm -hmm. Just jotted down a, a couple of stats. You already know these, and I've shared these with other people before. So if you're just tuning in, again, the show your real estate today, Paul Jamison, your host here with Preston Sandlin. We're talking real estate, and we're talking uh, our market and our world. Um, last, week up, uh, last week update, uh, 1.8 months of inventory in our market right now. That means if you no more houses go on the market right now, in under two months, it's, everything gets sold. Everything. Showings are stronger and getting stronger. Um, the market is being more positive. Home prices are stable and rising. 1.7% increase in home prices. Rentals are also strong and vacancies are getting filled. Listings are needed. We have a huge backlog of buyers. I think January, February, the stat was 28% increase in buyers in January and February. So all those people had to go on park. And now mm -hmm. they're looking for homes. If you're an investor right now, too, work the areas and work the numbers that are popular. Be ready and buy because due to inventory and an influx of outsiders, last year the statistic was 112 people a day. Moving into our region, rent is a premium right now. When you got no inventory, they got to move somewhere. Right. They got to have they they got to have a place to live, right? So, Preston, let's jump into Mr. Unpopular. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> All right. So, here's my Mr. Unpopular, and I'm uh, if you I swear if I get one complaint phone call and you don't listen to what I'm about to tell you, I'm going to hang up on you. So here it is. I'm not diminishing the virus. It's real. I'm not putting aside the real need for caution, concern, and safety, period. But I can't help but feel there are many out there that want to change things to benefit themselves and create a bigger sense of dependence and fear. So here are my three things. Number one, 
If you are at risk by health or otherwise, take whatever precautions you need and I will respect them. But do not impose your fears on me. But hear me, I will respect yours. Number two, don't expect to give me to give up what makes me human. I will not stop reaching my hand out. And if you don't take it, that's okay. Number three, I'm a hugger. I even have a COVID hug, kind of a sidewinder. <laughs> it makes me human. Quarantine the sick or at risk, not the healthy. Governor Cooper, I feel you're trying to really harm the state you were sworn to serve. However, guess what? Charlotte will not fail and neither will I. So look out. What say you, Preston? I'm a, I feel like a preaching man right now. Mm -mm. I'm, with you. I'm absolutely with you. Uh you know, our guys wear masks. We take all the precautions. But, um, you know, small businesses need to operate. And, and I, you know, I have a hard time thinking that somebody's little dress shop or little novelty shop is any more dangerous than, than, than uh, Walmart or somewhere else. So I don't understand why they're harming the small business person that you could do uh, social distancing in that. I mean... I, I think tell people the precautions, and but let people make their own decisions because they are all adults. We're not all children, um, and everybody take the precautions that you need. I don't need the government to treat me like a kindergartner. I'm, I'm a grown person, as all most all the living. And you know, you do what's best for you, and this what's best for other people, but we don't need the government to mandate what's best for us. That's right. just my opinion. Right. I agree with you 100%, and, and I will respect anybody's rights and feelings of safety. Guarantee it. Mm -hmm. But but don't don't harass me because I don't have the same fears as you. Can they or shame you because, you know. Yeah, I'm not wearing or doing or, you know, wearing a bodysuit when I, I, <laughs> I pump gas. I ain't doing it. So I ain't doing it. I don't, remember where, I don't remember where that was. I think some YouTube thing. Yeah, and, you know what? That's not a political. I know some people will take what you said as a political. It's not a political thing. No. It's a logic thing. I it's mean, my rights. Yeah, I mean, uh, we we can't stay locked down forever because the repercussions of locking down all these small businesses mm -hmm. are going to go far beyond. And, and the continual, it's not just the effect right now, they're going to be worse. I mean, at some point, you're like, whoa, wait a minute. This, the, you know, you know, and I don't know. I think everybody just needs to be adults and make their right. own decisions and instead of the government. You know. Yeah. I mean, the danger is real. Yeah, and, it, and it's, and it, and, and there's no, no, no denying that. Yeah, but you need a social distance. You need to wear a mask. Do what you need to do. I like the the hats that the people had on with the with the swimming noodles on them. You know, that had like out to either six side feet six feet, and so they just spin around with that hat on to keep you know make sure they're social. It looks like a, a, a helicopter, but you know they're keeping people apart from them. There's no question about it. You could do that or eat a Taco Bell. Keep and I want to I want to uh, give you some kudos, Preston. Uh, right now, you are doing an inspection in one of my houses under contract. Not you personally. Oh, I mean, yeah. one of your people. And, you know, there you have a protocol in place that is very respectful to people. Not one time have I gotten a complaint about how your guys are acting and the fact that they're respecting um, other people's homes and other people's um, environment. So kudos to you for and your guys. Uh, and to you know for for implementing that policy so yeah thank congratulations you. We have a, a, a system we're going through to protect the, the buyer and the seller and we're encouraging folks to let us go over the report virtually so uh, less people you know we're just trying to abide by everybody's and keep everybody safe yeah i think that's great so thanks for going down that path with me i promise now we're going to talk about um, other things that uh, as soon as we come back from the break, we're going to talk to Preston about top 10 ways to get 
a cleaner home inspection. And right now, these days, with limited inventory, you want to make sure that inspection is solid. So stay with Preston Sandler with Home Inspection Carolina. Myself, Paul Jamison with the Jamison Family of Companies. Sitting here in the studio in WBT, News Talk 1110, 99.3, and Radio.com. And... Jameson Realty YouTube channel. We'll be right Inspection back. Inspection Carolina YouTube channel. And Inspection Carolina YouTube channel, too. All right, stay with us, folks. We'll be right back. Here we are, back to show you real estate today. Thanks for being with us. You can listen to us multiple venues. Jameson Realty's YouTube channel, Home Inspection Carolina's YouTube channel, 1110-993, radio.com. I'm Paul Jameson, your host here with Preston Sandlin. With Home Inspection Carolina, we're talking real estate now. We've had our time to talk about other stuff, but it all's kind of related. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. So, Preston, one of the things when you finally get the home under the contract and you're ready to high five and get things going and that that appointment comes for you all to do an inspection or for an inspector to come, what can homeowners do to mitigate some risk? Oh, damn, home inspection. Home inspection. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a top ten list of uh, things home inspectors going to be looking for. Okay. Uh, the full list is on our website. Uh, I told the story before. You know how the list came about. I was helping my daughter study for a test one night. And she said, Daddy, isn't an inspection kind of like a test for the house? And I said, yeah, it is. And she said, do they know what to study? And I said, no, but they should. So we do have a study guide on homeinspectioncarolina.com. Click on the Realtor's Corner. And I think there's like 47 items. It's a printout. You can download it. Um, but, I, you know, for the sake of radio and the time, short time frame, I picked the top 10. All right. I, I love the top 10. I can All already right. see I, I'm going to be happy. Okay, so are you going to start with number 10 and work your way down? Yeah, but it's not like some big funny thing. <laughs> oh, okay. I wish, like the old Dave Letterman. Um so uh, the, one of the most important, and I try to pick ones that are like the easiest to fix, could make the biggest impact, that sort of thing. Um, clean, clean out your crawl space and out from underneath your deck, Paul. Um, if there's any wood debris in there, and wood debris is also like uh, insulation that's fallen down because mm-hmm. that, that paper on the back of it is cardboard. Cardboard's made out of <laughs> cellulose. W-O-O-D. Yeah, it's, that's conducive for termites. Yes, and, it is. And underneath the deck, I can't tell you how many times people leave firewood or, you know, an old pallet or something under there. And, man, if it's got termites, it's going to trigger a termite uh, a treatment on our house. Paul knows this, but, I, but for the sake of the listeners, I might not have been through it. That's not cheap. It's not like spraying for ants or roaches. It's, uh, it's going to be around $1,000, probably. At least, uh, yeah. There's a lot of drilling and trenching. and uh, mm-hmm. just, just clean out from underneath that deck and underneath that cross space. Amen. <laughs> All right. So number two on the top ten, uh, clean your HVAC, change your HVAC filters. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of them. And uh, not only clean them, but if you're like me and like 99.9% of everybody, they're probably dirty, too. The little grate that, you know, they have a little door that opens and you put change the filter and then there's like a little, you know, uh, louvers. Mm-hmm. Clean those louvers because uh, they get really dirty, too. And, and I'll be honest with you, a lot of people who can't get quite to where they are, those dirty louvers, they think your filter's dirty. Um, just get a sponge or a towel, wipe it down, clean those filters. Uh, wire, so if it's a wire brush, you know you got a bigger problem. Exactly, exactly. And, and cheap, too. I mean, the things are like 30 cents. Yeah, exactly. That's right. All right. You know Number- something? But people don't understand, uh, Preston, is, and, you know, there's there's all these theories out there. Do I buy the fancy filters? Do I buy the cheap filters? How often do I change them? My philosophy is this, and, and love to hear your opinion. My philosophy is that you're... You, that air coming in and out of there is like breathing. So it's kind of like a lung, right? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Well, it, unless you're really allergenic, I want a little more flow. <laughs> um, you know, they have the hypoallergenic ones, uh, and they cost a little bit more. Some people love these. Um, if you're hyperallergenic, the only thing is I think it, it costs a little more to run those because you're impeding the airflow a little bit. 
I actually like the medium ones. Um, the, the, the real cheap ones, man, they, they're real thin and it seems like a lot of dirt gets by them. And, you know, uh, you know, you're, if you're wiping dirt on your, you know, dusting a lot, then your filters aren't good enough. But sometimes, and, you know, I'll probably get some bugs that you from this. Some, the only thing is, that, you know, think about these face filters. If it was so, if you had on like four filters, how hard it would be to, you'd be really protected from the virus, but you not, might not be able to get the air in and out. Of <laughs> That's system. right. Especially if you went on a jog or something. See, Way to bring it to the COVID. Way to bring it to the Corona, man. <laughs> I see people jogging with this stuff, and I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, I, my lungs hurt for you because you need more air when you're exercising. But anyway, sorry. Didn't mean to bring it back to that. <laughs> I like the medium filter. I saw the one the other day where the guy had had taken a coffee filter and strapped it to the front of his mouth. I mean, well, golly. Well, those filters were hard to get there for a while. So uh, <laughs> yeah, you should see what we were using for hand sanitizer over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could drink it or wipe your hands with it. Yeah, man. Either way, either way. Either way, it worked. That's your coverage. <laughs> All right. What else you got? Dual purpose. All right, so let's go to uh, number three. Um, have you ever gone to one of your – go to all your faucets in your house and turn the water on. And if there's any of them that the water flows a little slow, I guarantee you it's that little screen. Because each one of them has a little screen underneath, and sediment builds up. They call it an aerator. It's just a little screen, and you can unscrew it. It may be hard to see, but if you put your hand under there and your fingers start twisting, you'll probably get it off. And just take that thing out, scrub it with a little old toothbrush or something, and run the water backwards, put it back in there, it'll be fine. Um, so simple, so easy to do. And then while you're there at each sink, do something else for me. That's number seven or eight is fill your sink basins up with water, right? Each one of your sinks, in your bathroom, your kitchen, uh, you know, put the plug or whatever it is, fill it up, then pull the plug and go underneath it and look at the drain line for any leaks. Uh, you oh. want to fill it up because it puts back pressure on it and, and goes all the way back up the pipe. And if there's any leaks, um, it'll be easy and simple to fix uh, and cheap. But you don't want this stuff on a home inspection report. And you don't want a home inspector to say, hey, they may have low water pressure. You better get the plumber out here. And then, oh, gosh. It was something you could have fixed with a toothbrush. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So we just had that happen. We had <laughs> down the street, they had a, uh, not a home inspection, but we had a, um, a water break line, a water line break down the street. And, nope. you know, the, there was muddy water, like, coming out of the, faucet and stuff and the toilet was like muddy i mean from dirt and then um the the refrigerator thing the water thing wasn't working right it was like dripping out right and it turned out that that mud had clogged up that filter in the fridge and we changed the filter and it worked fine but we were getting ready to call a service guy for a hundred hundred bucks and we probably need to take those, what did you call them, aerators, off of all our sinks because it's probably got the same issue. Yeah. Now, I will say, I mean, sometimes you do have low water pressure. If you've got it at every uh, faucet and your hose bib outside, yeah, you might have a water pressure issue. But yeah. if it's isolated to one uh, faucet or hose bib, mm -hmm. then there's something wrong there. Nine times out of ten, it, it's that aerator. Yeah, or unless you have teenagers at home, you always have low water pressure. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, number four, check the Freon lines on your uh, AC unit. Um, so what happens is, you know, your air conditioner, you, you have two Freon lines. Uh -huh. One's big and one's small. Mm -hmm. And the big one is the gas line, which is cold. And you have pipe insulation on it. And, Paul, what always happens is it always stretches a little bit or shrinks. Mm -hmm. Whenever it shrinks and that cold metal is exposed, it's going to, condensation is going to build up and it's going to drip, which almost always happens up in the attic. And you'll see a stain, but it's coming from the air conditioned condensation line. All you need to do is get some pipe insulation at Lowe's or Home Depot. Yeah, it's like $2 for a eight foot section uh and you just put it on there maybe put a zip tie or two on it and it'll solve that problem but just wow. real easy to check okay. the freon gas line the big one yeah it's super all the way cheap from the uh the the, the uh extension coil out to the uh, compressor right and you can use the old one and tie it to your hat for social distancing there you go yeah like the, the plug 
he got no, you know, by the way, the other thing that works great are those little, uh, what are they, noodles in the pool. <laughs> Dual yeah, purpose. that's right. Yeah, the yeah the noodles. Yeah, that's it. That's very much what pipe insulation is like. Just uh, you know, a little bit more colorful. <laughs> All, All right, right. Uh, number five. All right. um, ch- check windows for cracks, uh, reverse tension springs, and fogging. So basically, you know, go to each one of your windows see if it's cracked, and you should be able to open and close each window. Make sure because you know if you haven't opened and closed that window for a long time. It, painted shut um you don't want the the home inspector to put that on their report um uh, but just make sure it goes up and down and sometimes if you you know go around it with a putting knife you can free that up and make sure that when you put it up that it stays up it should yeah. stay up on its own and lastly if it's fogged you know they've got those two pieces of glass mm-hmm. and the fog built up oh man they're probably gonna have to replace it and uh, one way you can tell is to see if you can mark your name or something on each side of the window uh, this, this fault. Yeah. It's under 10 years old. It's under warranty. You can get that Get them to replace it. That's awesome. Well, we've, we've come into a break. We'll be right back. I've got Preston Sandel with Home Inspection Carolina, myself, Paul Jamison. Stay with us on News Talk 1110-993, radio.com, Real Jamison Realty YouTube. We'll be right back. Welcome back, friends, to show you real estate today. We're so glad you're with us on this Saturday. Happy Saturday. I hope you are warm, safe, and happily distance wherever you are and getting a haircut right now because I know we're into the first 24 hours of haircuts. So yay for that. Goodbye, Floby. Hello, Barber Beautician. So... Um, so we welcome we welcome the beauticians back to the world, and uh, you have been missed by us all. My eyebrows mm-hmm. will attest to that. All right. Whoever, whoever thought you could buy a pot legally, but you'd have to be back out to get here. That's exactly <laughs> right. Rich. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. yeah. I know that's a. Well, you could you could vape. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, I'm here with Preston Sandler with Home Inspection Carolina. I'm Paul Jamison, your host the Show Your Real Estate Today. Thanks for sharing your Saturday with us. We're talking about real estate. We're talking about how to get a cleaner home inspection report. Um, and, you know, we talked about cleaning the area around your deck and uh, getting the wood and things that are um, making contact with the soil, changing the HVAC filter putting more insulation on the Freon lines, checking the windows for cracks and fogging on the inside, uh, that that seal is busted. Uh, what's next, Preston? Uh, number six, the, the drainage around your house. Um, walk around your house and think like the rain. Um, where does the water go? And obviously water follows the path of least resistance. So ideally, you know, you want the water when it, comes off the roof or wherever it's coming from, side of your house, draining away. Mm -hmm. Um, If for whatever reason the drainage isn't planing away from your house, like it's coming towards your house or underneath your crawl space, that's not good. You need to fix that up. You need to do some grading, get some soil in there, regrade it. But, you know, your your property should fall away, um, you know, like one inch for every 10 inch, something like that. Now, I get that some houses are on the side of a hill, and that's okay. That's okay. Um, more than likely, you probably have some sort of French drain or swell. If you've ever seen a property on the side of the house, if you really look at the front yard, they usually grade it where there's a swell to kind of catch it and, and run around. But the real telltale sign here in the crawl space is you look under that crawl, and, like, now, if it wasn't wet under there after it's been raining for three straight days, um, you've got pretty good drainage. But if you don't, you know, you, you're going to need to do maybe some uh, grading or put in a French drain. But get that water away from your foundation long term. You ever seen a sinkhole in the road, Paul? Yes, I have. You don't, mm-hmm. you don't want a sinkhole of your house. And that's what no, I have. No. You don't have good drainage over a long period of time. <laughs> you, know, you know, there's a lot of, of, of houses, Preston, that don't have gutters. Yeah. And so that drainage falling off that roof... Uh, you know, kind of comes down alongside the house, and after time, it erodes um, the soil, and the house begins to settle more. Yeah, 
And yeah, gutters aren't required. Um, right. Yeah, I got mixed feelings about it. It depends on how they set it up. Um, I like gutters, obviously. Um, sometimes they can do just it, it, as long as it the, the it goes well out behind the uh, foundation. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've got a rental house that they look just like the little houses on Monopoly where the edge of the roof stops at the end of the house. Right. <laughs> it's got to have gutters. Um, it, it's really a poor design because if it, if it leaks, it goes right down the wall. But uh, you're right. You just got to get that water away from your footer because if it constantly gets under that footer, it's going to erode and the footer is going to drop and you're going to get cracking in your the doors are going to not open and close. It's not good. Not good yeah. at all. Yeah, long-term effects. Long-term effects. We know and then you're going to have to call some people who I think sponsor the show. So <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The foundation folks. I don't know exactly. I've heard it, but I can't. Off the top of my head, I don't know. But yeah. you're going to have to call some sort of foundation folk. That's right. You know That's right. Dry Pro. You call Dry Pro. That's right. It's not a cheap phone call, let me tell you that. That's right. <laughs> That's right. What else we got? The sinks. Fill the sinks, huh? Yeah, well, we were talking about that earlier. So home inspectors are going to come in and fill all your basins full of water and then pull the plug so that they get the full effect of the water, you know, back. So a lot of times you just run water down the sink. It's going down as fast as it drains, but it never kind of backs up and puts a little pressure on the sink. It should be able to handle the pressure on a full basin draining. Um, so, yeah, do that and get underneath, you know, open the cabinet underneath and get under there with a flashlight and look all over the place for leaks. And if there is a leak, the good news is it's usually pretty easy to fix. And uh, it can be cheaper for you to fix it if you're a little bit handy than, you know, them getting a plumber out there. It's going to be expensive. It will certainly be that. Absolutely. What else we got? Um, let's see. Number eight. Um, you know, check the roof for any missing shingles or nail pops. Uh, a little, you know, the shingle popped up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and what happens is when it, okay, so the nail goes through the shingle, through the sheathing, into the wood, and the wood expands and contracts over the seasons, and sometimes it'll push that nail back out a little bit. And when it does, it separates the shingles in that tar strip. The tar strips what seals it, you know, when it gets hot. So it could be susceptible if you get high winds to yank your your um, your shingles off. So you need to nail it back down. But very important, don't just go up there with a hammer on top on your shingle and hit it. <laughs> that would be really bad. Uh, what you want to do is try to lift that tab up a little bit if you can. Don't hit on top of the tab. And uh, you really want to uh, either a padded hammer or take like a uh, a two by four with a towel wrapped around it and hit on that. But just knock it back down so that the, the, what will happen, the, the tar strips will seal. I got you. That makes sense. You know, um, why why don't they use screws in a roof instead of nails that would not pop back up? Yeah, I think it's because the screw, like if you think about the way a screw works, when they put it down through the shingle, it's going to make a little bit of a bigger hole. Like, you know, a screw has a, a wide, narrow, wide, you know, and that wide part is going to make a bigger hole so that it doesn't seal quite as good. when it get, You know what I mean? Gotcha. Like when the nail comes down and then and it's right on it then the hole was never wider. It, it, it nails sealed a little bit better for water. Um, gotcha. I Makes sense. screws for everything else because they hold better because they have those teeth. Right. But those teeth are not going to seal as well. Right, right. Yeah, and, you know, you go inside in the, in the attic and you look, you know, where all those nails are. And so I start, as a, as a mostly follically challenged person, I'm always very nervous about getting my head scraped by oh, all yeah. those nails in there because I'm in those attics all the time. All it I takes know. is once or twice or ten times, and then you learn. I had my head scrape, arm scrape, foot scrape, and then immediately I'm asking my wife, when, when, when was that last tetanus shot? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I think I've had some rusty metal underneath my skin recently. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, next we've got the gutters. There, you know, you know, I've noticed that there's some great landscaping in gutters in some of the houses I've looked at recently. Yeah, some people need to weed eat their gutters. Uh, yeah, obviously, you know, if you impede the, uh, the flow of water and it overflows, it's just like not having gutters. And uh, and you're going to get a lot of water right there beside your foundation, which can, you know, compact the soil and cause it to settle and crack like we were talking about before. So you just got to, uh, you know, now's a great time. I mean, a lot of people are home. Um, clean those gutters out. If, uh, 
you don't want to get on your roof. I completely understand. They have a lot of blower attachments um, that you can do from the ground where, you know, a couple of attachments and then does a hook. That's a lot safer way to, to clean it. That's, that's the way I Yeah, do. there's companies to do it, too. And, no, uh, it's, it'll it's, do it. Make sure you know, honest. because the other thing, Preston, I was going to ask you, like, there's you look at some roofs and they got leave residue from the fall in the channels and you know things like that that can uh shorten a roof's life as well if that stuff's left there isn't it oh yeah yeah absolutely you know the asphalt composition shingles that we have 99 percent of us they're actually not waterproof they're made to shed the water as long as the water can flow down but if anything's impeding uh, the flow, you get sticks or something and leaves build up on it, or the gutter builds up and, you know, water pools, it will work its way down and leak. So it's made to shed like water on a duck, but it's not made to, it, if water pools on a, a, a shingled roof, it, yep. it'll leak. Yeah. All right. Well, we have 20 seconds. So the last one was just making sure what? Your windows and doors, what? Shut properly. Just right. go around to everyone. We kind of alluded to it before. But you don't want the home inspector putting something on the report to spook the buyer. Maybe you just haven't opened that window in eight years, and you know, but get it there. There's some lubricant you can use. Just make sure all your windows go up and down your doors open and close. All right. So if they want to do a pre-inspection or have you come out, how do they get you? Uh, HomeInspectionCarolina.com. Awesome. If you want to talk to us or a copy of my book, Opportunity is Knocking, you can go to pauljamison.com or you can reach us at 846-DUNN, 846-3663 or on the web at myjamisonhomes.com. God bless. Have a happy Saturday and hope to see you again next week. The Show Your Real Estate Today. Take care, guys.